and welcome to the second webinar in the Innovations in Immune-Mediated Skin Conditions webinar series. This webinar will focus on atopic dermatitis. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. My name is Kelly Rodemaker, and I am the Director of Strategy at Evoke an Audience, and I will be your moderator for today's program. The Continuing Education Program was designed to achieve the learning objectives listed here. The program is supported by unrestricted educational grants from Pfizer, Inc. The financial relationships reported by faculty for this program are shown here. ANCP is honored to partner with the Skin of Color Society to develop an additional resource for this program. Be sure to download the information on the management of atopic dermatitis in a diverse population. ANCP also would like to extend our appreciation to the National Eczema Association for coordinating the patient voice you will hear in the program. It is now my pleasure to introduce our faculty for today's program. Our speakers today are Junko Takeshita and Stephen Smith. Dr. Takeshita is Assistant Professor of Dermatology, Assistant Professor of Epidemiology, University of Pennsylvania Perelman School of Medicine. Dr. Kalusi is Manager of Clinical Pharmacy at Harmark Inc. The biographies can be found within the handout. Dr. Takeshita, I pass the floor over to you. What I'd like to start with is talking about the burden of disease, both the objective and subjective burden of disease. So first, um, I, I'm going to be using two different words to describe atopic dermatitis. One will be atopic dermatitis, the other will be eczema. And just want to start by saying the reason that you will hear me use different terms is because the data that I'm going to be sharing with you come from studies that define eczema or atopic dermatitis differently. So in general, when I refer to atopic dermatitis, this will be referring to a diagnosis based on some very specific diagnostic criteria that exist and that have been suggested. Whereas when I say eczema, this will be referring to a more non-specific itchy rash that might include a more specific diagnosis of atopic dermatitis, but may also include other non-specific eczemas. So with that, uh, starting with the basic epidemiology of atopic dermatitis, now, historically, this disease has been considered a disease of childhood. And until, I would say, the last decade or so, we really didn't appreciate this as a disease that was significantly affecting adults. Now, we know that the, uh, this disease is pretty common among adults as well as children. The prevalence in the U.S. among children is about up to 20 percent, whereas the prevalence among adults is about 10 percent. And I will say throughout, throughout this course, at least my part of the talk, I will mostly be talking about childhood eczema or atopic dermatitis data because most of the research has been done among children because we have historically considered this a disease of childhood. We know much less about the basic epidemiology um, uh, of atopic dermatitis among adults, but certainly there are more data coming as we have increasingly recognized that it's common among adults as well. In general, atopic dermatitis is considered a chronic disease. It waxes and wanes. And about a third of people with atopic dermatitis have moderate to severe disease. And we'll talk a little bit later about how we measure uh, objective and subjective disease severity. Now, the, the picture on the right shows a little bit about how the distribution of atopic dermatitis might change from among infants to childhood to adult disease. The very classic sort of description of where the body, what parts of the body are affected by atopic dermatitis are classically sort of the skin folds. So we would call those the, the, the inner aspects of the elbows, behind the knees, um, whereas sometimes um, that can be different among babies. And we, we see in the leftmost image, sometimes can see it on the extensor surfaces like the elbows or the knees, whereas we see more of the um, the flexural folds type in children or adults. Now, I would mentioned that uh, atopic dermatitis has a chronic waxing and waning disease course. And unfortunately, it's difficult for us to predict the trajectory of disease for each individual, but there are some emerging data that suggest different patterns of disease trajectories. And these are data from a study of two British cohorts that followed people from birth through midlife. And what this study found was that there may be four different trajectory types. People who have no or rarely active disease, as indicated by the black solid line. 
those who have decreasing probability of disease over time is indicated by the orange line, or increasing probability of disease over time is indicated by the light blue line, and high probability of disease over time is indicated by uh, the darker blue sort of dotted line. And so these two panels are showing two different cohorts. We still know very little about what drives these different trajectories and whether this holds true for different populations. Again, this is a British cohort. Will this hold true for um, a different um, population of, in a different geographic area? Um, but geographic and environmental exposures have certainly been suggested to play important roles in determining someone's disease trajectory over time. Now, atopic dermatitis, as you heard in the video, is also associated with a number of other medical conditions or comorbidities, most notably other what we call atopic diseases, which include asthma, seasonal allergies, and food allergies. So for example, with regards to asthma, more than 50% of kids with severe atopic dermatitis will have asthma. About 75% of kids with moderate or severe atopic dermatitis will have seasonal allergies. And about a third of kids with atopic dermatitis will have food allergies. It's important to be aware of these other, co other comorbidities that may um, affect uh, uh, clinical management of disease. Atopic dermatitis also runs in families. About 70% have a positive family history of atopic dermatitis. And if one parent has atopic disease, so that includes any of, the, of AD, asthma, seasonal allergies, food allergies, then there's a 50% chance that a child will also have one of these atopic diseases. Now, what do we know about the prevalence and burden of atopic dermatitis or eczema across different racial and ethnic groups? Well, among children, data from a 2003 National Survey of Children's Health, which is the data that's shown here, and this is US data, show that childhood eczema is most common among black children and multiracial children as indicated by the green and the orange bars, and a little bit less common among white children. Uh, with regards to disease severity, black and Hispanic children are also more likely to have moderate or severe eczema compared to white children, again, as indicated by the green and the orange bars in the moderate to severe groups compared to the white children. Uh, but there are other, like, there are likely other factors that are driving this racial and ethnic difference in eczema severity. So in that same study that I showed differences in disease severity by race and ethnicity, when differences in household income and maternal health across the racial and ethnic groups were accounted for, these factors were found to be the driving factors of the racial and ethnic differences in eczema severity. So for example, as highlighted in the red box, Children from households with lower incomes, so the zero to 99% um, of the federal poverty level, for example, and children of mothers with fair or poorer health were more likely to have moderate or severe eczema. And so there are these other social factors and environmental factors that are driving the racial and ethnic differences in disease severity that we saw on the previous slide. <clears throat> 